Okay, so the idea is to make it uh, walk and run in, in front. For that, we, we clearly don't need iKey. iKey we need only uh, when when it needs to bend in, 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 in this way or this way. So it, we need to see the knee, but in this scenario, we don't see the knee. So what I did previously, I just added IG and added another layer of it. But right now we only need that. Um, let me do it so we can see. I will select the root, add one bone. I think I'm going to cut all video before this moment. So select the bone. Name it character. This will be uh, my root replacement. Uh, and add another bone for the character. And the body, which will not contain the feet, feet are inside the uh, on the ground, and after that I will um, bring up, bring down another hip. Let's call it hip. Add legs inside that. I'm checking uh, the image um, images to see how I am going to place the bone where. I see that I, I did not prepare uh, nicely the feet. I would do differently now, but let's try with this uh, approach for now. Up until to the knee, if possible, reading the chart. Uh, yes, of course you can do that with one mesh. We can go with this one. Mm, yeah. But since we have food, I will also show how how they uh, how to use them. And sometimes if artist draws them, I just don't want to waste them and I would do them. I might go and ask if if I can um, remove them, but normally I would use it still. So we have food. Leg. We have the other one up until to the knee and so let's go up in this portion i will add only two bones one uh, uh, up until this section the chest because we are not like snakes we mostly move this this is a rigid portion of it because we have ribs etc so mostly we uh, bend this portion so for that you can add a bone up until here and then continue one here. Uh, I will add bones for the shoulders. Um, I'm thinking of how they would rotate. And then just um, continue with arms as you would expect, obviously. Putting everything inside another bone which would be the hand and after that I will continue later. Now let's add another bone here. Upper arm, lower arm, everything that inside the hand and hand bone. You can check it quickly. Working fine. Working fine. It's not going to work fine for now. And then I will ignore the neck, but instead will add the bone for the head. So you can go ahead and add the bone here right away and put everything inside that bone, everything that is uh, in the head except the body. So this way you will have rotation from the neck or you can just put it here. But this way you need to consider that you also will need to move this uh, right, left and right. So because otherwise that rotation neck will be stiff. Cool. Continuing. Let's add bones for the feet. So now that we have frontal and we need, I know that we have ankle here. So that means that it, it, 
um, it is important to understand how we will use them. If any time we will go and move that ankle like stretching or maybe climbing, it is really important to have this rotation. But sometimes character is small and you, you just don't need this. Maybe in that case, I would lower this um, bone up until here and leave it there. But in this scenario, I will add that bone. So I will go select the root container for the character, add a bone here, like contact point and up until here. Select that bone again and contact point. Let me select the image and add here. I'm not concentrating on the naming since the images also were named very unprofessionally. This is, this was my work. So uh, I'm kind of ashamed uh, of it, but let's see if I can do better now. Maybe I don't have reason to be ashamed. I'm still terrible at it. Okay. Um, I think I will do legs a little bit different. I will try at least because right now with this configuration, I'm still going to use one eye keys but maybe I can do better. Maybe we'll see that. Um, I will get rid of, I will try it for one leg now. For that, I need to mesh this quickly. Let's not overcomplicate it. just mesh it so we can bind it and we'll try for that. I will also need to mesh this one. It doesn't look something that should be meshed because it's pretty much a solid portion of the leg, but we need it meshed with this technique. Okay, we'll add a bone on the knee here and see if that approach works. I will be bounding to this bone and this bone, this bone only for uh, grabbing. So it's, it's basically like a container. So if you are going this way, do not bind something here. So if it's lower portion, bind to this bone, upper portion, bind to this bone. And here, here and here, here and here. I will add a bone here. I don't think it's going to work. We clearly don't need the leg to break. And change the thickness, of course. So maybe we can fix it by changing the values. This should be bound to this, I forgot. Mm, 
it does change the shape a little bit of the leg but it's not that terrible so we have leg moving mm, we have this portion moving and yeah let's bind it give value to his this and see how it works yeah i think i can go with this setup it is pretty much easy i don't need i keys here again um and most of the time i'm going to shorten and uh, add length to the portion of the leg and better if i do it manually otherwise i kiss uh, will be um, difficult to manage in some portions maybe if if the character is climbing like frontally or doing some kind of squats i will do i key if, if character needs to do some kind of these movements i will add i key with for that but right now I keep it simple. Um, and and here you can see I did rotation like this, but I think I will just give it to zero value. And I'm thinking if I want to rotate it this way. And let me actually try to add another bone and see if that also will work. What if we have a bone that will rotate this way? So with this situation, we have an arc, but I think I will just ignore it. So for now, I will be moving this part manually like this. And this would be just raising the feet and doing the walk. I can go ahead and add constraint here. But the idea was to keep it simple so it's up to you again not not naming now uh, since i have already messed up everything i should have cleaned up before streaming so we can give like 40 percent value and then if i move it up you can see the leg also moves that way so this way you can animate and then compensate by moving also this uh, but i will uh, keep it for now without constraint and maybe add it later for now we just have one leg that moves and then animate the knee again this is pretty simple rig so uh, for the arm i will definitely not do any any kind of that let's mesh this uh, top and see if we can do easy here um, if you compare with the previous one you would see that there were a lot of vertices here this is also the way to optimize and make it simple so let me bind it to these bones and see how we can make it better. Okay, in this situation, I will be moving this portion, shoulders and neck. So I need to consider that. For now, I will start here and maybe add a few words here, come here and maybe they do like this. Let's start from this meshing and then add more points. Maybe a few more. Again, I'm not binding things to this bone. This is just container for those two bones. Okay. 
first let's bind the ba base bones, the spine bones. Make it smooth. Yeah. And now just try to paint these bones. And let's just final touches. Enabling code key pop ups. Uh, we need to avoid this breaking part. For that, I see that we have uh, triangles not that good placed. Maybe this would work. Yeah, I think this is pretty much, maybe this portion moves too much. So for that, I can add a vertex here or, or just leave it. But I will go and add one. I don't want this shoulder to affect too much in the middle. Okay, now let's give it more volume and see. Yeah, so now it doesn't drag too much from here. Even more. Again, we need to get rid of this opening here. I think the problem is that this uh, upper arm comes too closer to this section. For that, maybe we can shorten it in Photoshop or just convert it to mesh and move it back this way. No. 
let's try again. No, we need to add more vertices. Yeah, I'm pretty much happy with this one. Moving this up so we don't see the arm. So the upper arm works fine. This portion works fine. This works fine. I am not going to move too much. And this does not work fine. So we can fix it. Which is not going to be easy. I can see it already. So for this you can either go ahead and uh, add that I key section that I had previously. Uh, let me grab the project and see it. So I have I key and if I move it up, you can see that I key actually would have bindings to here. So many verses here you can see also. And you can go with this way or you can go another with tricky way, which is risky because it might break some meshes and if you have a nicer texture it will be visible so for now i will add some vertices here i am assuming that it will uh, overlap and go one inside the other and see if this helps we are almost there and yeah, so this is what I was thinking. And you can see we have overlapping here. Can you see? No, my head is too big. Okay. You can see we have overlapping here and which we can see by changing the order. This can work fine. So again, you can see that we have avoided another set of IKs just with uh, changing the way it, it works. And we can actually change the layering order of the arm. And if you are wondering how am I rigging and binding and then bringing them back, I heard a lot of questions about this. I actually select the bone, control C, copy them. You can see the key pop-ups and then move them, whatever do it. Then I will just control V and pass it. That way I, I can handle uh, smaller weightings. If I do complex weightings like face, I would go into animation mode and do it there since positions are not changed in the rigging setup when you work in animation so you can revert them back easily okay we we have it working now um, we have some some issues here mm, but i can fix it easily i guess by just adding some points Yeah, this is also fixed. Maybe another bone here. Yeah, that's...
No, it did not help us actually. No. I thought we can have some curvature, but it did not help. Okay, let's move down. We have this mesh. Uh, I will go and do a bigger meshes so I can easily fix them later. Maybe this. And this portion as well, a mesh. Okay, so for this part, you can, uh, what, what I did previously, I actually put everything I knew. I went to add this kind of movement, I keys, which is super cool. It's, and it, clients liked it actually, it was really cool. And I bound this bone, I believe I put it inside the feet. So when we move the feet, it would also move But now we are not going to do that. Instead, I will add, I'm looking where it actually hits the leg. So it is. it has had contact here, but it also falls on the leg here. So I think we will just add a bone here. And maybe another one here. So, and that's it. And maybe lastly, I would go and bind it to this bone. So we can connect upper portions there because they are actually attached there. Yeah, so it took me like a few minutes I remember I, I spent uh, like an hour or maybe 50 minutes just for rigging this portion and then revisiting, editing, revisiting, editing. And actually animating it also is not like without pain because it's not always gives desired results. So I, I had to go and frame by frame animate, fix it. But now I have full control over it. I need to compensate when like leg moves there. I need to compensate and animate it too. But I'm really used to doing that anyway, because without that, you can't actually create a rig that that works perfectly. Okay, let's see the comments. We don't have any comments. We are at 40, 15 minutes, so. Okay, I will go ahead and quickly do these legs. leg set it to zero by the way did you know that you can grab from tip of the bone hold it at the tip and then move it and another way if you hold the alt and move it it will drag the children bone with it so this is very good uh, way to just uh, change the size of the bones okay
So this is not a rig that I, uh, yeah, I would do that animation walk and run, but first I would just ask it in, in the community tab if they want to see it, because sometimes something is very obvious that people would want to see, but it's, it's not the case. So in this channel, people mostly want to see VFX animations. I, I guess I am good at that. Because sometimes I really don't know what to put more about VFX. Everything is pretty much similar. But people still need to see it. Yeah, so I was actually surprised that you didn't pick uh, VFX again this time. So I'm rigging now because the bot was for the rigging. Okay, so I am I am not clearly sure about this rig, but I know that it was it is easy to fix or redo even redo because you saw like few minutes and leg is ready. If I need one day just add an I key, I can clearly do it. For now, as as you, how would you animate? I would go and move this up and down. Let me put it inside this bone. Move this bone up and down. Yeah, move this up and down and then basically pause all the feet. There is no proper way to animate just so I, you will have to pause, uh, shorten the legs, make them longer, shorter and change the images to the other ways. So if you have them, I see that I don't have the heel opening up because when it comes to closer, closer uh, to us, we would see the bottom side of the foot. But we don't have it here. Yeah, we have the otherwise, but it, it, we could uh, achieve that with stretching it. So, hello. Okay, so I will leave for now the foot, feet, legs. Disabling rotation for this portion. I will go also and disable for the head. I'm not yet there, so disable, I guess, the shoulders, maybe the upper arm. Let's try also disable those. I don't think it's, it's going to give much effect. Yeah, let's bring it back. It, it's not much difference. Okay. Uh, let me see how I did running for the character I had. I did not play the animation. I have the walking. So you can see that snapping, switching the feet is not good idea and there was uh, even though I did the rig you can see that Aiki did not help me a lot and I did a lot of mesh keys here 
so to adjust i guess those which is kind of cheating and look at the backpack or i don't know how this called the pack so it's it's not even that functional that i is where there's so much use not at all so at the end uh, not fingers uh, not these portions not even the shoulders were uh, stretched to their extreme capabilities i just did a lot of rigging but at the end uh, i did not use And I don't like this walk at all. The first thing that uh, is off is that foot should never slow down at any moment. The moment it contacts the floor, it should go constantly, at constant speed, especially for the games because it's a loop and developers moving it constantly with constant speed. And look how this tip is f planting on the ground. There, There is like seven frames for that. It's not a lightweight, so it would fall on the ground in one or two frames. But now it's like a lightweight feather or whatever. Anyway, uh, if you look at the far, it, it's not that bad. It, it's look okay. It's looking okay. And let's go back. Front new. So, where were we? Okay, next thing I want to do is actually to rig the arms. I want to leave this bone setup for arms because they will make sense. A character might grab something from the ground. We need to see elbows a lot. While the knees won't be visible that much. I mean, if the character is frontal, the shoulder bone, the shoulder... Uh, the joint is very flexible, so it can rotate in different angles, thus revealing the elbow at different poses. But here we actually will see very little of this pose. So mostly it will be this or this. Mm. So that's why we don't need this kind of setup here. I guess so. For now, I, I believe uh, so. Yeah, okay. So, but but I will still need that uh, shortening portion. Without that, we will just break things here. We need that shortening. Otherwise, character might go... Anyway, we need that shortening. So for that, you have uh, two options, I guess, just to not overcomplicate. You can go ahead and create an eye key setup here. Uh, two eye keys, one bone each and yeah basically adding key here and then making it stretch and compress like this and similar way with this one and you have to turn it off if you want to make um, rotational movement like this so this one comes with a delay and anything so the posing with the pose tool even you can do if if there are I case uh, you can select the bones I'm answering on one of the questions how to attach selected bones with a shortcut so you select the bones and hit uh, P button I do that way and that would uh, wait for you to select the bone that will be parent okay so now what we can do uh, we can create another bone here. Um, I'm thinking now and um, bind it to this bone, I guess. Let me make it nicer mesh so we don't skew it or change the uh, size. Yeah, now we can just move this bone 
and it will get shortened. Meanwhile, we will have that rotational movement, I guess. Yeah, we should have it. You can also rotate this one, but it will break things. Same way we can go ahead and uh, do the bone here and put it inside that. Uh, another way you could go and actually um, scale this bone that will also scale this portion, but you can go ahead and disable scale. And that way you can scale it, but it will create some artifacts. You can see while I scale it, it also rotates. You can go ahead and turn off rotation, but that will uh, kill the purpose of having them together as bones. So if I rotate it, this portion will not rotate. Anyway, any uh, option comes with its um, drawbacks and benefits. Cool. I will go with this option for now. I did not use it too much. Uh, I'm used to work with the characters in three quarter view of frontal and profile. And yeah, so that's why this is also an experiment for me. But I work with this character and I really know what, what was is its use. So how would I actually use it? We don't need actually those bones, but let's leave them. And we can shorten it here. So again, very easy to rig. And anytime you want to discard it and rejig it, feel free to do it. We don't have too much time spent here and we can easily redo it. So I will do it fast for this section. So you can see how actually fast it is to do. And that should be it. We have now rotational movement that we will be mostly using these bones to make her run or wave or whatever. But for example, if she is actually running, we need to make a shorter limbs. And this would go there far there uh, and would come back. Like sometimes it comes back and this would shorten here. Yeah, I can see. We did not good finding. So when it comes here and like arm um, goes up, we will have this portion. So let's move it back for now. Fix this binding. I reverted it as well. And I will mm, select everything. Filter, enable the filtering so I can move it up. Mm, okay, so yeah, of course, you can share your characters, just send me to Arman com to my email. And then just I will, we can uh, pick up it there. I did receive some characters, um, people were sending just for the rigging. I wanted to create on poll and see which character we you want to. I have so far these characters uh, collected. Where is it? 
these three characters. I like this one, but on the, at the end, I, I, I thought, Hey, frontal rigging is much difficult. And I, I, I just thought that you might get more benefit just to see how it can be done. Okay. Let's not lose some, um, speed here. I forgot what I was doing. We have had now let's fix the rig the fingers. I will disable this and we have fingers separated here. So what what you can do in these situations if you want to rig the fingers or no, it doesn't matter if it came with PSD or no, because um, sometimes uh, they just clients ask artists to draw a lot of stuff, but it's not the case. You don't need to animate them all for sure. So you need to read the description of the animations that will come. For example, I know that this character will be grabbing some uh, objects from the ground and giving them waving. So that is also important showing with finger here and there. So the hands is pretty much usable. And this character will be talking to other characters in, in the front foreground. Uh, so we could go and rig it. Mm, but I don't want to rig it similar way as I did with previous, uh, like every finger had in Aiki. So what we can do is actually, um, let me see what states I do have here. We have closed fist. We have another closed fist. We have open finger, pointing finger and thumbs up. Yeah, I will do the two ways. One is simple. The other one is medium uh, difficulty medium, what you will need most of the time. So for both of them, we will need to mesh exactly the same way. So I will do two joint setup here. Put one bone there. The um, side where it will be bent, I will add one extra vertex. We have 15 viewers. It's going to take some time. Tell me guys, where are you from? Just so we can have chat. I'm from Armenia. I live in Spain right now. That's why I also know how to speak Russian. Everybody in Armenia knows that, I guess. In our movie theaters, even we will watch uh, movies in Russia language. It's weird when sometimes we watch like popular movies, but in translated in Armenian, it's really cringy. So we tend to watch it on English or Russian. <laughs> Sure, ask me, Tarak. Oh, great, from Ukraine. I know that there is 
word there. And I think everybody knows. It's hard to believe that things like that happening in this age. Okay, we have all meshed. And now for this, let me hide these states. So for this, I will just use one other bone here. Uh, maybe two. No, just one. And the other one for thumb. This is the easy way. So binding them. I think I overdid. We don't need these bones uh, versus here. So what I want to achieve, actually, let me uh, remove some vertices here as well. I'm reading the chat. There is a question in a game to this spine expert with frames for an enemy, for example, using a big hammer. Uh, I don't think exporting with frames or without frames like JSON, uh, there will be a problem. It is connected. I mean, if there is no JSON, that JSON cannot contain information about the binding bounder uh, the collider with JSON you can draw a collider over that hammer or, or the head of the character where the hammer hits so to be able to set a collider within spine you use bounding box which you can find later in unity and then convert it to collider but if you want to use frames you need to set up that collider manually in unity
So, so the idea is to move all fingers using one bone, but show some kind of difference between them. Let's see if we can make it work. So I want everything to be moving here, I guess. We have very thick fingers, so it's not too much visible here. But basically, this is the idea. You just uh, weight them less and less, giving less and less values until you know, things look like this. So this, um, you will not be able to point fingers, etc. But if something you grab and move this way, hey, you have one bone, just super easy. You can uh, scale it if you want, just to give some kind of perspective uh, and some movement. And of course, same will work for this thumb. Uh, the other way is just a normal way. Basically, you add two bones for each finger, making sure that the second bone will be um, located in the place where you have the vertex. So I will enable wireframe and position that bone exactly where I, I want to see them. So this would be the point. Now let's disable wireframe. Yes, we can downgrade Spine Project to older versions. It will come with the cost, but depending which version you want to downgrade. For latest versions, you just go ahead and export it JSON set a version here uh, down until 3.6 and it will generate json then you reimport that json into a new project and save it and then yeah you have it but things will break and you need to manage them manually if it is lower than 4.0 you will have to use some um, command line uh, to downgrade them. So I have a tutorial about that, but I don't think you will need that. Okay, now let me bind them. And you can see that I will be bring it back here. So you can see if you just go ahead with um, automatic binding, uh, fingers will work pretty much okay, um, but they will change their thickness at some point. For that, that's the reason why I created those uh, two close uh, vertices. 
So one I give 100% to this bone and the other one to this bone. The same way works this three uh, setup, three um, vertices setup. I do the same for this and this and in the middle I will just go ahead and do the half. You can add more but make sure that this and this have 100% of this value, this bones value. Otherwise the finger will change the thickness and if you don't like how it cuts here, maybe you can change the layering order and it will be fine. Depends on your art. And I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do next after these fingers. Mm. How much time we have spent our, I think it's a lot to start another section. Maybe I wanted to do also the face, but I spent a lot of time just preparing this project which I am ashamed of because I could have prepared it without spending your time. Okay, so we have simple bones here. Uh, one thing you can do just to not create eye keys and similar to this, just add one more bone here. Um, doesn't matter what direction you can actually add it here or here somewhere that is not uh, disturbing your view and bind those create constraints to those bones but that will create constraints so uh, you could go and create constraints with less and less values up until here so yeah it, it actually depends how much you have um, time basically you would go and match it and rotation like so when you rotate it, maybe we need to set it local. So, and similar way you go and do the same with the other fingers, but with um, higher value, just set it to local 20. So you don't need to hit much because it's anyway it's a local. So this would be the way, the similar way, pretty much like this. But in this scenario, you can actually go ahead and animate them separately, those bones. So if sometimes you need to change the pose, like make it like it's it's pointing something, and you can actually do with this setup. But this is again a little bit complex. We are aiming to make it simple. Uh, okay, so what else we can do? I don't want to rig the face. Rigging face uh, is is pretty much similar to other sex like uh, profile or other views, and I do have some rigging uh, videos about face. But I want to see if I can give you something. I think I forgot to rig the neck. So I can do that while I'm thinking about how to. Yeah, I think I can work with that. Maybe reduce the value.
So to make it work in uh, as walking animation, you will have to add a little bit more details here. Like uh, right now I can see that I have a bone here, but this bone will not work uh, to show perspective. I mean, mm, the first thing we would like to do is to rotate it in a direction like this. So when we scale it, it actually scales in perspective. Otherwise, it will uh, scale differently, not, not desirably. So change the direction. So this is a way that you can uh, change perspective. When you walk, because when you walk, it's really important how you see these portions. This is very crucial. Um, let's jump back to the original file front and see how they actually move. Yeah, so, but this is just mesh deformation animations. We don't want that. And I will go ahead and animate the only leg portion. So, and maybe finish with this character. Otherwise I don't want to create another pole. I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be selected as a result. So I will do that basic animation and see if, if I did proper rigging or no. Because I am really afraid that I am screwing up and I don't know even about that. So I mostly work within uh, 40 frames. I have no idea why I did 80. So let's assume this is um, up and down movement, which we don't know that it's too high up. For that, we can select the uh, Y axis, um, hit frame to frame it, and hit uh, this one to uh, disable after frame. So I can work with this. Hit store to see the previews, and now I will just reduce the amplitude. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I like this. So there will be also this movement, I guess, but let's for now just do the up and down and leg positioning. We will need the legs to come closer to the original, uh, the behind, below the character. So let's do it. So the purpose of this animation is to see if our rig at least does the basic stuff. Okay, I see up and down and they are too close uh, to each other, but let's see if now things work. I normally when I do uh, up uh, walking, I know that at 15 frame, the body should be upper position. This is something that works for me. So I will offset it. And then any of those uh, feet, I will just move them in the maximum foreground position at the zero frame. Uh, we'll scale it for now just to see how it works and scale it uh, uh, down. Again, I am not animating a lot of frontal animations, so. But what I want to do is quickly see something so I can build upon that. So this is the uppest moment and it needs to contact after two frames. Boom, and it did contact. Let's assume that. So before that, it was actually in the air. And it comes, it starts raising uh, from 25 frame. It goes here and then plants the foot. Don't worry about it looking not good right now. I want to see that something that I can build upon it. 
this is the way I work that works for me. Um, So in this situation, we need uh, to show this uh, heel. I don't have that for now. Up until here, we need to show that. And then here we will see it low, uh, going up because character moves on the tip of the head. Um, this tip, foot. Um, let me see if you actually see it. Yeah, you see it. Okay. So we want, we don't want to make it looking like a dinosaur, like heavy walking. So it should not raise the feet so high. And I see some snapping. Let me see what actually snaps there. Okay, now I will quickly just do the knee portion. So let's assume it is pretty much visible here and we will do like this because we see the bottom part of it and then the otherwise we don't see that part and we need to make it. Um, I don't know, I, I, I clearly don't know. So this portion it needs to shorten I guess and then otherwise it raises back. Okay, so this is actually as, as would be a super frontal, but I did not consider one thing that foot needs to move up. So when it goes back, it will actually move up a lot. It's, it's not up, it's actually perspective moving, so. And this is where I need uh, a little bit more of the rig for this portion. Hmm. I mean, I, I want to go ahead and just morph it, deform, like move it like this so we don't see the bottom part. But I don't want to add bones or deform keys here. Let's uh, continue. Let's actually continue. So one thing also scales is when it actually comes here and then when it goes back, it will scale down. It is not looking good. I mean, maybe if I see both of them, it will start looking good, but I don't see how it actually uh, releases the ground. It's very smooth, which should not happen.
I want to see what's happening with the curves here. I want linear movement here when it uh, moves with the ground. So here we we actually miss few frames for the feet foot. Uh, it should change the color. It should change the state. I mean, I do have some states here, but none of them will will work. Actually, it will continue snapping. Maybe this one is better view, but the, uh, it, it's not going to help. Hello. Because right now we should see that bottom part, the hill. Because it is on the ground, but it's it's not visible here. So let's assume we do see it and it is here. So it would be like this. And then in a second it goes and hides. I will show you, try to. Sure, I don't want to animate meshes. So you can see what I'm talking about. Mm. But anyway, I will delete it. Let's see how we can improve. We can go ahead and change the color for that. Yeah, that will give us perspective. Make it dark, make it right here. Same would go for trousers, I guess, but not that much, very little bit. And I guess not this one, only this one. Okay, let's try to duplicate it to the other foot so we can see the full picture. We copy this, we delete this, we... we copy this here, copy this. Let's see if this works. And now just select everything and with adjust, try to move it back where we want them. Mm, I did forget to copy colors, I guess. But I will do it here. Okay, we have two beautiful legs moving unnaturally. Now we need to offset them half a cycle and see if we did something. Yeah, it looks like a duck. Uh, first issue is that I see the legs are pretty much too separated. They need to um, walk very close to each other. Otherwise, this character would fall. So for that, I can go ahead and bring them closer. 
with the just enabled. This makes a little bit more sense, maybe rotating it. And now last thing, I guess, not last, there is a lot of stuff to do, but important thing is to change the ordering layer. Pretty much like that. So what I would add to this rig, if if this was for production, I would add some controls over over this portion, like this bottom part, to show that it goes down. For that, maybe I would add another just uh, bone here, just to control on the this portion. So basically, I want um, to control this. And that's it. Um, and this, of course. The other one, I would have one leg a foot that has heel visible like this, but heel, an actual heel. And next, I would add rotation to this portion to match. one cycle mm. I need to fix the craft but I don't want to go inside that now so basically uh, this you get with with faster animating I mean after that you can improve whatever you want, I guess. I have um, messed up with this. Yeah, I don't like it, but at least uh, whatever we built is working. So we need to add more layers on that. We need to also animate this, I guess. Try to using a scale also to show perspective. Terrible idea, but scaling uh, would work if you show perspective. Um, for root bone, I am using uh, the character bone, this one. And we'll put this inside. Yeah, this, I think this would be it. I am not sure if the stream was good enough to save it. I will rewatch it and see because it was pretty much experimental. I'm pretty, uh, I'm still not sure if this is super functional because I am not, uh, I don't have too much experience doing this, but it was a uh, very nice, um, practice for me and I guess also for you just so you can see another approach.
Thank you very much. I believe I will still be rigging an ordinary character very soon. So expect a poll um, and subscribe to see it. I guess without even subscription, you can see and vote it. I am not sure. Yeah, but that's it. If you have questions, I will be still here for several minutes just to answer them. But pretty much stream ended here. Thank you. Yes, I do use monitors too, but I only use uh, Spine on one of them. And yes, I am in Discord channel. Um, we have Discord server. I mean, it's not mine and it's not official, of course, but there is a Discord server. This is more appropriate to say, which uh, has a lot of spine animators, developers, everybody is there who loves spine and works with spine. So if you have questions, go ahead, uh, drop your questions, your works, anything, just go ahead. We are happy to see you. And I'm also uh, there. So yeah, you can find me. Cool. Closing the stream, guys. Thank you very much for watching and being here.